fantastic! Yeah! I've seen that escape act before, but never like that. No doubt about it. Merlin the Magician is the greatest since Houdini. Here he comes back on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, as any sophisticated Broadway audience knows, no magician can work without props or assistance of some kind. So, before I say goodnight, I'd like you to meet the trusted helpers without the feats of magic you have seen tonight would have been impossible. First, may I present Moke the Rope. Moke. Time to wake up, Moke. <laughs> Wave hello to our friends out there. That's a good boy. Look at that. That coil of rope. One end is rising and it's actually waving at us. Yeah, a variation on the old Indian rope trick. And now, old chap, fetch me my top hat off the rack there, if you don't mind. And my cape. It's doing it. Reaching over to the rack, bringing the hat to Merlin. Now back to the rack and back to Merlin with the cape. Thank you, old chap. No self-respecting magician should be caught without his hat and cape. Could be arrested for indecent exposure. That's all for now, Mope. You can go back to sleep. Hold the robot. Say hello to the folks, Cosmo. Hello to the folks, Cosmo. That's Cosmo. He will have his little joke. But he is a very competent fellow and can move as easily as any human. Cosmo, take the table and chair off the stage, will you? Like a good fellow? Thank you. And wait for me backstage. One good thing about Cosmo, he has no mechanical parts or electronic circuits to surface. That's impossible. How can he move? With Cosmo, what you see is what you get. Yeah, but I don't get what I see. Why did my spider sense start tingling at the sight of Molt the Rope and Cosmo the Robot? Wow, what a superb showman! And finally, ladies and gentlemen, meet my trusted friend and companion, flesh and blood like you and me, Rasputin the Monk! It's a monkey! A chimpanzee, to be more exact, and a very large one. Uh-oh, again with the spider sense. An extraordinarily clever fellow, Rasputin. He can read, write, figure out mathematical problems, and play a good game of chess. <laughs> and now that you've met all my friends, I think it's time to be moving along. Rasputin, fetch the carrot. Huh? That's it, good man. He's pulling a rickshaw and Merlin's getting in. And so, friends, on behalf of my three assistants and myself, I wish to thank you for your kind reception and bid you a fond farewell. Home, Rasputin! Gee, thanks for a swell evening, Peter. Sure you won't come up for a cup of coffee? Ah, uh, no thanks, MJ. Got some work to do. I'll see you tomorrow. Gotta switch into my Spider-Man outfit and find out why a chimp, a rope, and a robot got my hackles up. It is now two o'clock in the morning. On the roof of a building next to the university's new science building, we see a very different Merlin. Those stupid audiences like the men of academia cannot accept the evidence of their own eyes. But now, once again, the sacred holes of Ivy will pay for rejecting Merlin Valentine's theory of mind over matter. The stage is set for the ultimate proof. Right, Cosmo? The ultimate proof. Right. Without setting foot inside those walls, I have planted a bomb which will be detonated on receipt of a signal from my mind. Good trick, Merlin! Spider-Man! How did you know I was here? I followed your trail from the theater. Got a few tricks of my own, you know. Tell me. How did you plant the bomb? With the aid of my assistants who operate only under my mind control, it was easy. Moke attached himself to the other building, and Rasputin crossed over the rope carrying the bomb and placing it where I wanted it placed. And Cosmo? Cosmo, I keep by my side. The protector of my person, so to speak. This procedure has proven infallible in the past. You mean you were responsible for the destruction of the science labs of all those colleges around the country? 
Destruction of knowledge is a terrible thing, an abominable thing. <laughs> the work of the abominable showman, you might say. Hey, I like that. Very funny. But proving beyond question the supremacy of mind over matter. And now, much as I regret it, you have become an obstacle in my path. An inconsequential conglomeration of matter to be destroyed by the power of my mind. Gotta keep him busy so he can't detonate that bomb. Uh, maybe a little web-slinging is in order here. You missed, Spider-Man! <laughs> wow, he deflected one of my best web shots by pure mind control. <laughs> now to try a little slinging of my own. Get him, Mope! The rope, fast as a snake. Got my arm, going for my throat, gotta break it. Oh, did it. Now for some ooky gooky rope immobilizing web fluid like this. And mope the rope goes Betty by Cosmo Rasputin! Destroy him! Can't let a robot and a monkey make a monkey out of me, can I? Destroy, destroy. Wow, that hunk of tin was faster than I thought. Holy smoke, a killer robot in front and a crazy monkey on my back! <laughs> Any funny sayings or flippant last words now, Spider-Man? <laughs> flippant, huh? Hey, thanks for the tip. A little double black flip like this. And like this. And the monk is sunk. Cosmo, destroy! Destroy, destroy. Ready for you this time, Tin Man, with a double... And a robot in a sling. you, Merlin. Here's the old Spider-Man. One, two. By the time you wake up, the bomb will be long gone, and you'll be in a cozy you can contemplate mind over matter for a matter of, say, 15 years. Good morning. At the entrance to the science building. Peter? Oh, hi, MJ. I thought I'd catch you before class. Did you see this story? What story? Caught in bombing attempt. What a tragic ending to the career of a wonderful showman. Or as he himself put in. What did you say? Oh, a, a wonderful showman.